So, you folks have been curious about what the US Air Force has been up to lately. Well, let us spill the beans. They've been getting futuristic up there, playing some real-life Star Wars stuff in the air. Think about testing the most powerful laser weapon on a Boeing 747 aircraft and all that jazz. But here's the kicker. The Air Force had this grand idea of slapping a laser weapon on an AC-30J Ghost Rider gunship. But guess what? That dream's gone bust. Crazy, right? Well, that's the scoop for today from Infinite Innovations Tech, bringing you all the latest in Infinite Innovations. So let's dig into it and see what's what. Before we discuss the most powerful laser weapon on a Boeing 747 aircraft, let's address why the Air Force's plan to mount a laser weapon on an AC-130J Ghost Rider gunship has been scrapped. Due to technical challenges, the Air Force has decided not to install and operate a high-energy laser weapon on the gunship, ending the service's latest attempt at deploying an airborne directed energy system after years of development. According to a spokesman for Air Force Special Operations Command, AFSOC, the airborne high-energy laser, AHEL, missed its integration and flight test window for operations from an AC-130J Ghost Rider gunship during open-air ground testing. Despite achieving significant end-to-end, high-power operation during ground tests, the missed window prompted AFSOC to refocus on ground testing to enhance operations and reliability, preparing for potential use by other agencies. While the AHEL may still be considerate for future use as part of a different Air Force agency's directed energy efforts, it's unlikely to be deployed from a special operations gunship. This decision marks the conclusion of efforts initiated by Air Force Special Operations Command in 2015 to mount a high-energy laser on a fixed-wing aircraft, with Lockheed Martin's involvement in the project since January 2019. Let's delve into the Boeing YAL-1 Airborne Laser Testbed, a modified Boeing 747-400F equipped with a megawatt-class chemical oxygen iodine laser coil mounted inside. Its primary purpose was to assess the feasibility of using a laser system for missile defense, particularly in destroying tactical ballistic missiles, TBMs, during their boost phase. Initially designated YL-1DAW in 2004 by the US, Department of Defense, the aircraft underwent various tests. In 2007, the YAL-1 successfully test-fired a low-power laser at an airborne target, demonstrating its capabilities. Subsequently, in January 2010, it intercepted a test target using a high-energy laser and successfully destroyed two test missiles the next month. Despite these achievements, funding for the program was slashed in 2010 leading to its cancellation in December 2011. The YAL-1 embarked on its final flight on February 14, 2012, landing at davis Monthan Air Force Base near Tucson, Arizona, where it entered storage at the Boneyard, operated by the 309th Aerospace Maintenance and Regeneration Group. Eventually, in September 2014, the aircraft was scrapped after all salvageable parts were removed, marking the end of its operational lifespan. Now, let's discuss why the operational lifespan of the Airborne Laser ABL program was short-lived, primarily due to fundamental concerns about its practicality. Secretary of Defense Gates expressed skepticism about the program's viability, highlighting the need for a significantly more powerful laser to engage targets from a safe distance effectively. Moreover, the high cost of operation and the requirement for multiple aircraft compounded the program's challenges. As a result, the Air Force only sought additional funding for the ABL beyond 2010, with Air Force Chief of Staff Schwartz deeming the system non-viable for operational deployment. By December 2011, the project was officially terminated after 16 years of development and a staggering cost of over $5 billion. However, the YAL-1 testbed provided valuable insights into the potential of airborne laser weapons for missile defense. While the current configuration was deemed impractical, 
it demonstrated the feasibility of using air-mounted energy weapons with enhanced range and power to intercept suborbital ballistic missiles and rockets. Subsequent efforts focused on refining this concept, with studies underway to mount laser anti-missile defenses on unmanned combat aerial vehicles UCAVs, capable of operating at higher altitudes. The new approach envisioned unmanned aircraft carrying electric lasers with extended ranges and improved survivability against air defenses. Unlike the ABL, which relied on chemical fuels and crew rest, an electric laser system would offer near inexhaustible endurance and armament, making it a more viable option for future deployment. The Yale One's origins can be traced back to November 2004, when it underwent modification at Edwards Air Force Base. Initially, the concept of an airborne laser system was tested with the Airborne Laser Laboratory, a prototype installed in a Boeing NKC-135A that successfully shot down several missiles in the 1980s. Formally initiated by the U.S. Air Force in 1996, the Airborne Laser Program transitioned to the U.S. Missile Defense Agency, MDA, in 2001, becoming an acquisition program. Boeing's ABL team led the development, with Northrop Grumman supplying the coil and Lockheed Martin, contributing the nose turret and fire control system. 2001, we acquired a retired Air India 747, 200 and transported it to Edwards Air Force Base. We integrated it into the System Integration Laboratory, SEL, at the base for testing. The SIL simulated operational conditions, enabling us to conduct extensive testing of the coil. Once we qualified the system, we integrated it into the actual aircraft. The YAL-1 originally a 747-400F freighter, underwent conversion for military use and completed its first flight in January 2000. Following successful ground testing of the coil in 2004, the aircraft was assigned to the 417th Flight Test Squadron Airborne Laser Combined Test Force at Edwards AFB. So, besides the coil, the YAL-1 system also packed two kilowatt-class target illuminator lasers to track its targets. On March 15, 2007, the YAL-1 nailed it, successfully firing this laser in flight and hitting its target square on the NC-135E Big Crow test aircraft, sporting a specially modified signboard target on its fuselage. This was a big moment. It proved the system's ability to track an airborne target and adjust for atmospheric distortion. The next step in the test program introduced the surrogate high-energy laser, Shell, which stood in for the coil. It showed the transition from target illumination to simulated weapon firing. By July 2008, the coil system was installed and undergoing ground testing. But then things took a bit of a turn. In April 2009, Secretary of Defense Robert Gates recommended nixing plans for a second ABL aircraft and suggested the program return to purely a research and development effort. He cited significant affordability, technology problems, and doubts about the proposed operational role. Yet the YAL-1 still had some standout moments. On August 13, 2009, it aced its first in-flight test with the Shell zapping an instrumented test missile. Then, just five days later, on August 18, 2009, the high-energy laser aboard the aircraft got its moment, firing in flight for the first time. Talk about making history. In January 2010, the high-energy laser intercepted a test missile alternative range target instrument, MARTY, during the boost phase. On February 11, 2010, it scored a big win by destroying a liquid-fuel-boosting ballistic missile. This was a game-changer, marking the first time a directed energy system had taken out a ballistic missile in any phase of flight. However, a beam misalignment issue caused a hiccup during the engagement of a solid fuel rocket later that day. But overall, it was a groundbreaking achievement. The coil was at the core of the system, composed of six interconnected modules, each about the size of an SUV and weighing a hefty 6,500 pounds, 3,000 kilograms each. 
When activated, this laser unleashed energy in just five seconds, packing enough power to keep a typical American household running for over an hour. If the ABL had met its targets, it could have potentially destroyed liquid-fueled ICBMs from 600 kilometers away. However, the range for tackling tougher solid-fueled ICBMs would likely have been limited to 300 kilometers, which might have needed to be increased for various scenarios, as noted in a 2003 American Physical Society on National Missile Defense report. And that wraps up today's Infinite Innovations Tech video, everyone. We hope you find it informative and enjoyable. If you did, give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button to stay updated with all our latest and greatest content. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.